Hi guys, Christos here, Cyprus Without Borders. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this latest scandal surrounding the Cypriot government and the banking industry about the non-performing loans. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll give a little bit of a summary. Um, so the person who's compiled this list, her name is Kristalla Yorkaji. She's been trying to get these this list published for some time now, for a couple of years, and uh, and she used to be the the governor of the Central Bank of Cyprus. She's not anymore. So she was trying a couple of years ago. So here's here's a letter to uh, Dimitris Siluris, who used to be the president of parliament from the 4th of April 2019. So she has tried to get this pushed through before and uh, it was rejected by Dimitris Siluris. Now don't forget Dimitris Siluris is the he was the presidential the the president of parliament um, and he was also revealed in the passport selling scandal which Al Jazeera published a video a documentary on um, a few months ago now. He is the guy who was, opening, uh, who was holding the, the big glass of red wine <laughs> as he winked into the camera. So that's Dimitris Siluris. He has since uh, resigned from Parliament, quite rightly so. And uh, Adamos Adamo has become the new presidential par uh, president of Parliament. He has uh, gone and approved the list to be published. Right, there's so much, there, there's a lot to go on here. There's, there's, there's a lot, and I don't, I don't think I should spend much time talk, looking at it because, uh, you know, you, you guys can all, um, can all look at it yourselves. I'm sure if you're interested, then you can find this list online, Sigma's website, it's, uh, it, you know, you can find it quite easily. And, um, and so the list is now available for everybody. But a person who I want to highlight is Christagis Giovannis. So I'm pointing at him with with uh, with uh, my mouse here, and he appears on this list several times. And he appears to be the one who, with the most amount of non-performing loans, he's got several loans. Um, non-performing with the most amount of money, more than anybody else on this list. Uh, actually, no. Out of the politicians, he is the one with the with the most, because there's a there's other people who aren't politicians on the list as well, as other members of the Cypriot elite in the banking industry. I'll just call them the elite because it's just easier. Uh, for example, the Iakovu brothers, who are a huge construction firm, uh, are also on the list, with a huge amount of non-performing loans. And also the company who um, import uh, Unicars, uh, they import uh, Audi, Volkswagen into Cyprus. They also have a huge amount. But out of the politicians, um, he, he used to be an Agel politician. Christakis Giovannis is the uh, is the big villain here, the biggest villain, let's say, because. Uh, he, you'll remember him as well on the uh, Al Jazeera Revelations documentary. He's the guy who patted this person who wanted to buy a citizenship on the back and said, "This is Cyprus." That's him. Okay, so these people who who continue to sell out Cyprus, these politicians who we are relying on to solve the Cyprus issue, what a waste of time, treasonous waste of space that they are. Okay, so the, the list are there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dwell on it for too long. I'm gonna move on because this woman here, who you are now looking at, her name is Emily Yolidi, and she is the person who is in charge of making sure justice is served. So she is the Minister of Justice and Public Order in Cyprus. So she's the one who should be leading investigations. Uh, against the members of the government, against the uh, and against members of the banking industry, she's the one. Now I'm reliably informed that uh, Emily Yolidi is a very very close friend of President Nikos Anastasiadis's daughter. So whether we will get that full and thorough investigation that we want, 
is a, is a different story. Uh, I've taken to Twitter to see what she has to say uh, about this. And this is what she tweeted on the day the papers were released. And I've already translated it here, okay? Tomorrow we are announcing the biggest reform ever made in the country to deal with the Lenarian Hydra of corruption. If the opposition means that it is proclaiming, it will deal with it constructively. We will all be judged by the result. Let's hope so. But again, you know, she, as politicians do, you know, if the, she's shifting attention to the opposition so if the opposition means what it, it is what it is proclaiming so you know it's not just the opposition who are accusing and proclaiming here you know there's lots of people who who want to see um a, pro, a full and thorough investigation and there's lots of people who are proclaiming that you are all a bunch of crooked beeps Okay, uh, but <laughs> sadly, I mean, this, this tweet came out, wait, let me find it. This tweet came out on the day, so on Friday. Today is Tuesday. This tweet by Emily was on Friday. That was the very day these, pi these papers were released. And then, rather conveniently, this was an article which was released yesterday. I like Sigma Live, by the way. I like Sigma. They're a very good source, very honest. Uh, I like them. So, um, uh, but unfortunately, the Minister of Justice underwent surgery and therefore she will be unable to carry out her duties for, for about 10 days. This is what it says in this article here. So she'll be absent from her du duties for about 10 days so stalling for time we're gonna have to wait and see what you know if people forget about it by then who knows who knows but you see the the, the worst thing about this is i mean let, let, let me go back to about a year now and uh, coronavirus was hitting europe everybody was uh, was feeling somewhat uh uh, you know, we were all starting to, to face these lockdowns. And uh, for me, I was so shocked and gobsmacked by how quickly and efficiently the Cypriot government acted. They acted with so much integrity. And I thought something's not right. Since when have the Cypriot government been so quick to react? Since when have the Cypriot government acted with such integrity? I thought, what's going on? 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 And now I think I'm starting to put two and two together. And now I think I've, I may have found the reason as to why the Cypriot government was so quick to react. So we've got this text message system in place. Uh, it was in place last year. Um, I think, what months was it? Was it May, June? Where well, you had to send a text message in order to leave the house. And so you were given ten reasons, uh, eight reasons as to why you were allowed to leave the house. So you could, you know, for example, if you wanted to go to the doctors, reason number one. If you wanted to go to the supermarket, reason number two, and so on. You know, if you wanted to walk the dog, daily exercise, reason number three. And I, I don't know of any other country who implemented this system where you would have to send a text message and receive permission by a government body to leave the house. I really have no idea. I, I've not heard of this happening in any other country. I know a lot of people in lots of different countries and I've spoken to them. Uh, it's not happening in Australia. It's not happening in Ireland. It's not happening in the UK. It's not happening in Germany. It's not happening in France. This system was only put in place in Cyprus and it's in place again now and now I start to think well hold on a minute maybe this is the reason why the Cypriot government implemented this procedure to get permission to leave the house and for only specific reasons are you allowed to leave the house there's a new ninth reason by the way which is going to the hairdressers so if you want to go to the hairdressers you send nine your id card number and uh, you send it to a, a phone number and then you get a text message back granting you permission and you've got three hours from that text message but what there is not 
a an option for obviously is to send a text message to have the right to leave the house to go and demonstrate or to protest and so i'm wondering is this the reason why then you know because uh, like we said these um these scandals this this uh, this list has been somebody's been trying to push it through since two years ago and perhaps the government knew it's only amount of time before uh, before it does get approved or whatever maybe they were scared they were worried so they've set up this system and now we are not allowed to hit the streets and the we, there, there's no pressure being put on the, on certain members of the government to resign or whatever you know, there's, we can't go outside the presidential palace and demand the resignation of Nigos Anastasiades or anybody else involved. And Nigos Anastasiades is guilty, by the way, whether whether or not he is guilty of uh, of pocketing any money from the passport scandal or from this latest uh, unpaid load scandals. Whether he is directly. Uh, whether he has directly potted any money on it or from these two scandals or not, he is guilty of negligence. You're the president of an entire nation and you don't know what your colleagues are doing. I, I mean, at the very least, he is guilty of negligence. But and we're talking billions, by the way, with, with these unpaid loans and with the passport scandals, we are talking billions Billions of euros gone, vanished, all this money just gone into the pockets of these people. And don't forget, we had the haircut. We had the haircut. Lots of people lost their life savings, you know, lots of people, um, you know, there's stories of people, you know, who had uh, sold their properties in the UK and come over to retire in Cyprus, put a couple of million in the bank, lost it. You know, yet these politicians and these bangers are still walking around with fat wallets. And don't forget, a lot of these loans, as you can see from the lists, they were taken out pre-haircut. And in fact, there's a couple of loans which are after the haircut as well. So all of these loans, which were pre-haircut, these crooks have borrowed all of this money, not paid it back. And who paid for the loan? repayments in the end the people of Cyprus and so there's got to be some sort of backlash but we're not allowed to hit the streets and demonstrate and protest and this is something which I was saying as well you know I've had these conversations with people about coronavirus um, we are being forced to sacrifice some of our rights and people have dismissed it as oh you're talking nonsense well I think as it turns out I was not talking nonsense because as a result of all of this text message rubbish and all of this that you have to do to be able to leave the house, we are, um, you know, we, we are we are not allowed to hit the streets and demonstrate voice our disapproval, voice our concerns. And for once, I have found an article by the Cyprus Mail which I approve of. Okay, so. Um, uh, PEPs that stands for politically exposed persons. And um, I think the headline here uh, summarises exactly how I feel about the whole thing in one sentence. The PEP's list is uninformative, but a step in the right direction. And that, that's pretty much how I would say. I've studied the list. I've looked at the list. Um, it's, you know, there is nothing concrete that we can really go on. And we can't even uh, be sure that all of the information is still correct because remember, it's a couple of years old, this list. So it is uninformative, but it is a huge step in the right direction. 